Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to show you guys how I hand sew all of my DIY projects. Now in this video, I will be showing you guys only three techniques, mainly because these are the only three that I use. Now, if I get the names wrong, my bad, I guess, but this is just what I call them, all right? So <laughs> let's get into it. So what do we need to start hand sewing? Obviously, we need the hand sewing needle. Now this right here came in a pack that I got off Amazon. And this is how the pack looks like from the brand Singer. Focus, please, it's not focusing. Boom. Now there's an assortment of hand sewing needles here, but for me, I personally like using the biggest one, mainly because I use some really big thread to hand sew. And then on the topic of thread, of course you can use the regular size sewing thread. Personally, I don't like using this because it can't really be seen from a distance, like that jacket right there. You can kind of see even though it's blurry, like these white dots. And that's because I use this thicker thread right here. This is size 10 crochet thread. Now, because this thread is really thick, it's really difficult to thread the needle. Now there is a tool that will help you with that. But instead of buying that, I just have this extra sewing thread here. Just pinch the side and use this to thread the needle. I'll go over more on that later on. Then of course, you're gonna need some scissors. Um, it's just to cut off the excess thread. And then the rest I'm gonna show you, they're not exactly essential, but they're very helpful during the process. And the first thing is some pins. When you're hand sewing a patch onto denim, for example, you wanna keep it in place, make sure it doesn't move, just pin it down and you're good to go. Now, an alternative to that is to use some tacky glue. Maybe you can use some Elmer's glue, but personally, I like to use this. You don't have to cover the entire area. You can just put multiple dots of glue throughout, put it on and it'll be good to go. The last thing I recommend is using a white chalk pencil. This is good if you're trying to hand sew a design like some sashiko design, or if you're just trying to sew a straight line, this is super helpful because you can just wash it off. Here's an example of the difference between machine sewing and hand sewing a patch. They give off different looks and whether you like one or the other is up to you. Again, I'm gonna use some extra sewing thread to thread the crochet thread through the needle. I made a small loop and held it together with one hand and then with the other hand, took the needle and fed the loop through the hole. The loop is what's going to pull the crochet thread through. Now the length of the thread depends on what you're working on, but I normally use by an arm's length at a time. But again, we're gonna feed the thread through the loop and then pull the thread from its tail end, bringing both the sewing thread and the crochet thread through the needle. Now don't pull too hard or it may snap the sewing thread. When the thread is through, join both sides and make them even at each end and also make sure the needle is in the middle on the other side. With one hand, pinch both ends of the thread while the other holds the needle. Place the thread on top of the needle and pinch both the needle and the thread together with the hand holding the needle. Now with the free hand, take the thread and wrap it around the needle twice. How much you wrap it depends on how thick the thread you're using is. After you wrap around the needle, place the knot where your other hand is pinching the needle. Pinch it enough to hold everything in place, but not too hard where you can't pull the needle through since that's the next step. While pulling the needle through, make sure you're still pinching the knot of the thread until it reaches the end. When it's at the end, take both threads and pull them apart to make sure there isn't any loose thread in the knot. And now we're ready to sew. The first stitch is the straight stitch. We're gonna start by poking the thread from underneath to hide the knot. Following the line, the process is pretty simple. All you have to do is go in, move down the line a bit, and then out, and then move down the line a bit, and repeat. The Japanese way of doing this stitch, and the way that I prefer to do it, is to feed the needle multiple times through the fabric before pulling the needle and the thread all the way. The spacing may not be as accurate as if you're doing each individually, but it's faster and I personally like this look a lot better. To finish the stitch, pull the thread to the underside of the fabric and flip the fabric over. One hand holds the needle while the other takes the thread and flips it as shown in the video. Then take the needle and place it inside the loop you made, pinch the thread and needle with your hand holding the needle, and wrap the thread twice around the needle. How many times you wrap it depends on the thickness of the thread you're using. After wrapping the needle, pull the thread out while holding the long side of the thread with your other hand and pull until the knot you made reaches the surface of the fabric. Then place the finger on the knot and pull the needle outward to make a knot to finish the stitch. Stitch. The second stitch is the back stitch. The concept is like the loops on a roller coaster. The loops happen above the fabric while the bottom of the loops happen below. This stitch is good for making solid line designs or making really secure hand stitches. When you loop back, poke through the most recent downward stitch and then move down the line from underneath the fabric.
The last stitch is the over under stitch, which starts from underneath the fabric and a bit further from the edge of what you're sewing. The vertical lines happen over the fabric while the diagonal lines happen below the fabric. Just like the rest of the stitches, you end the knot underneath. This one is my personal favorite for sewing in patches or patch repairs. Applying these to patches is simple. You can use pins to hold the patch down while you sew it, but it will be a little bit flimsy and the end result may not be as flat, or you can use glue to keep it flat and in place. I prefer using glue, but keep in mind that if you glue thinner fabric, you might see the glue spots that will bleed through the thin fabric. The straight stitch won't keep the patch entirely flat since you can still raise the edge up, but it is the fastest way to stitch if you don't mind that. Here's an example of how I use the back stitch on my recent project. If done right, it can make a nice outline and really secure the patch, but again, the edge itself isn't really secured down. The over under stitch makes a nice design while also securing the patch and its edges down. It's like a three in one, so this is my go-to stitch to use. There you guys have it. Hope you guys found this information informative and you guys will incorporate this into your projects. I know the process is really, really time consuming, but for me personally, I like to, whenever I finish a project that I hand sew a lot, I like to hang it up in front of me, take a step back and just like admire my work because I know I put so much time and effort into it. And I just think, you know, things made by hand and actually looks good and not by a machine is really cool. Yeah. But if you guys want to keep up to date with what I'm working on, follow me on my Instagram at Julius Nathan. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you guys like this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.